So welcome to this uh, well first vehicle uh, dynamics lecture. Uh, I'm going to talk about the Quara car model today, um, which is basically the well most simple form of uh, vertical dynamics and an analyzing tool for yeah vertical dynamics and comfort in driving. So vertical dynamics using the Aquara car model. So I'm going to um, make a sketch of it, um, talk about the components, make a free body diagram and the equation of motion will be derived as well. So what do we have? We have a mass, a sprung mass, which is actually the vehicle body. And attached to this mass, there is damper and the spring. To these two, there is another mass, which is the unsprung mass, called MA for now. And there is a spring to it as well. Um, here we have the road profile, which is actually the input FC. So we denote the spring damper as DS and the uh, spring, yeah, spring mass damper as DS and the spring mass spring as KS. This is actually the tire spring, call it KT. So, uh, well, these are basically the components for it. And we're going to set up some rules for the game. Make some assumptions, or assumptions. We assume that spring compression is defined positive and uh, the position is indicated by these arrows will be positive as well so we have some reference points over here referencing the positions of the uh, the different elements actually. It's an S. No, like that. So the Z's are positive as well. All right. Um, well, we'll start off with a free body diagram. Uh, we have two masses, so let's draw them. I always think it's easier to draw and go from there. So this is the MS and MA. Well, draw the road, it's not really necessary, but it makes life a bit easier. So assume the road input is, or the road gives an input to the spring. Uh, the spring will compress and it will create a counter force to this FC, so it will be in, well, let's do this in another color. It will be in that direction. Uh, from this follows that this goes in that direction, and over here it is, oh, sorry, It's like this. These are these are the direction of the, the forces acting on the the masses. We can actually neglect this part for the rest of the uh, of the equation. It's mainly about this part. 
So, um, first of all, let me denote the these again. We might actually, well, not might, we do actually need this one. So from this, the equation of motion can be uh, can be made. Equation of motion. Um, and we assumed over here that spring compression is positive and these are positive as well. Um, and we have two masses over here, so we need to decompose it into two equations of motions. One for the sprung mass, ms times zs double dot, uh, which is actually the acceleration or is just ML, uh, m times a for force. And so it's the inertia, uh, mass inertia, actually, and uh, which is the sum of all the forces acting on it. Which is in this case, oh, let me, this is FD, this is FS, and this is FT. Let's call it FT. So, this is for the sprung mass. So, the forces acting on it are FD and FS, in both in positive direction. So, it will be FS plus FD. All right. For MA, the unsprung mass, ZA double dot, it's the velocity, or the, sorry, the acceleration. Um, FT is acting on it in positive direction. And FD and FS are also contributing, but in negative direction. So, now we actually have both of the, well, first equations, uh, but we still need to define what FS and FD and FT is. Um, in order to do so, the wheels come in handy, actually. So, first of all, let's take FT. FT is, well, the spring right over here. KT times its deflection, so delta L actually, or yeah, let's say it's delta L. Um, but delta L is equal to, well, something with CR and ZA probably. So we said compression is positive, so let's assume it's FZ is going up and the spring is being compressed with ZR as reference point. Well, in that case, ZR is positive, right? Well, if you look from this point and you compress the spring, ZA will be in the other direction, so negative for compression. It's actually quite an easy method for analyzing these kind of things, because can be quite hairy sometimes. Um, well, let's see, so that's FT. We still have um, FS as well. So that's for that part over there. And contributing to those two is ZA and ZS. So for compression from MA, or from the unsprung mass, looked at from the unsprung mass, uh, compression will be positive direction for the ZA. So we got KS, ZA positive, and for compressing from this side on, ZS will be negative. Okay, well, now it's only the damper that's left. And it's in the same position as the spring. So the this notation will be well it'll look the same. That's ds, so the damping constant, 
times ZA but with a dot and ZS dot because uh, damping force is velocity dependent and not position dependent as a spring is. So basically we we now have it. Uh, we actually need to put it in the equations we already made. So for the spring mass, call it one, two, we got ms times cs double dot is equal to fs, so this term here, ks za minus cs plus ds ca dot min minus cs dot and for the second equation the unsprung mass ma za double dot is equal to ft which is this part minus fd minus fs so these are basically the two expressions to work from um, let me see what's the time left so we got those two and we can put them in there well, natural form, put everything on one side, which makes it easier for further analysis. It's equal to zero. We can still make a plus of this, and this becomes a minus, this becomes a plus. Same over here. And for the second equation, It becomes this. Put everything in order from highest derivative to lowest derivative. It looks a bit better, I think. Mm. KS minus KT. So that's basically it. If you want to make a plus of this, that's perfectly fine. Well, that's basically the how you derive the equation of motion for a quarter car model. So maybe in the next lecture I will, or next video I will uh, go a bit more in depth in analyzing uh, these kind of things in MATLAB. But well, we'll see for now.